So now we're going to look at um, drawing in the eye, measuring it out. There's not quite as much to measure here because you've already placed the eyeball, which gives us a lot of the information that we need. There is the article here by um, Stefan and Wilkins, or, pardon me, Stefan, uh, about placing the eye, and that's already informed how we've, <coughs> excuse me, placed it in the digital model. You can hear, look here at the Kanthai position. So he's saying that the the MC, the medial canthus, on average 4.8 millimeters lateral to the medial orbital wall. And the lateral canthus, about 4.5 millimeters on average from the lateral orbital wall. <clears throat> so here I'm on the measurements for front layer. My anterior lacrimal crest is around here, and that's where the palpebral ligament inserts. And then the, sorry, the medial palpebral ligament. And then the lateral palpebral ligament inserts on the malar tubercle, which is inside the orbit here. <coughs> it might be difficult for you to see yours. You can examine it on the real skull and make a judgment about where it should be, what height. So if we want to make a measure from the medial orbital wall to see where the medial canthus should be, we kind of run into our first problem. The wall is continuous, uh, and how are we going to make that measurement? So if, if I choose to measure here, so it's slightly inside the orbit, that's at just almost 121 in my measure, so it's saying that the medial canthus is going to be somewhere like this. And then the lateral canthus, actually it was closer to 5 millimeters. Oh, no, that's pretty good. Um, and then for the lateral canthus, so from the lateral orbital wall, about 4.5 So starting at 154, down to about 149 and a bit. So, uh, to be honest, we're measuring in the 2D scene like this is very difficult. So I'd like you just to try your best. So there's not that much to modeling the eye, sorry, to drawing the eye. Um, I like to, I'm going to go to the front sketch now. <coughs> and with my brush tool. So I'm just going to turn the visibility on there. So here's, I didn't color in my iris like you did, if you did, but it's somewhere, the limbus is here. So that'll just give us, give me something to work with. So, City back up. And so we have something like this. You don't really have to draw the eye. I'm just doing it for reference. And so the medial palpebral ligament is going to come up, and we want it to cut across the top of the iris. Carry on, on down there. And then this, remember this is a 3D shape, so it's coming up around the eye, just brushing the bottom of the iris. So we've got our medial canthus here. Sorry, lateral canthus at that point. Going down towards our medial canthus. So it's shaped like this, you've got the caruncle and the semilunar fold. So it's mostly the placement of the eye that's guiding this. Of course, the shape of the orbit also informs this. So our eye will be shaped something like this, and we've located the lateral 
medial canthus. Now I'm just going to erase some of these sketchy lines. So if I just turn off the sculpt, so we had something like this. I sketched in the eyebrows earlier. Now generally, we don't really need the eyebrows. <clears throat> We're not modeling or texturing them, but they usually start down here under the orbital rim and move up and out. So we can you can put those in if you want. Now I usually try and mark the shape in between the shape of the um, upper eyelid and the shape of the orbit here because if this has to area has to be depressed because of the supra palpebral sulcus up here um, we want that information for modeling so and there is often a depressed area back here I'm just rough shading it in roughly so I can see it during the modeling So that's pretty good. I've got all the information I need here for the eye. Now if you were to have to model bags under the eyes, you might want to just sketch that in a little bit. But this is a younger person, so for now let's just leave it as is and take this information over to the side view. Now you can do the same thing here, but we're just going to be modeling um, one side for now so you can draw I would like you to draw both eyes but um, are we really only going to rely on one so I'll just do this quickly just measuring out those suggested distances to place the medial and lateral canthi. Remember I want this one to cut across the iris a little bit more. This one is going down to the anterior lacrimal crest. So just brushing underneath. I think I measured this too far. I started a little bit too far in for the orbital wall. Uh, I, I don't really, you can see how different this one is here. It's part of the lighting, I can't really judge. So I'm going to kind of just mimic what I have on the other side, of course. It's going to be, there should be differences. Each eye, because Skull is different on both sides. Roughly symmetrical, but not perfectly so. So now I want to transfer this information to my side view. So if I turn on my side, sorry, my side measurements and my side skull, I'm going to take top of the eyelid here and bottom of the eyelid here. I'm going to go mark those in my model. Just going to turn off my front sketch temporarily, side measure, top of the eyelid, bottom eyelid there, turn on my front sketch again, grab my lateral canthus 
here and put that in. Then the medial canthus we can't see, but I'm going to, uh, well, we get a good idea of it's sort of in this area here. So our eyelids will look something like this. You can see how I'm extending them outside the orbit. Remember, like I said in class, they have to have some thickness. So now I'll <coughs> turn off my front skull and my front sketch. I've got the measurements I need here, so I'm going to go into my side sketch. And duplicate these lines here. So you can see we're building up a pretty good shape of the eye. Just going to color my iris in so it's easier to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I've replicated those lines. I'm going to turn off my measurement side now. Hide my guides which is command colon. And when the eyes are open, a lot of the lid will be sort of tucked underneath the top here. And then this lower eyelid kind of merges into the face. Now we've got a younger person, so if I just turn off my side skull, you can kind of see. I don't need a lot of detail, but you want to capture the fact that there is thickness to the eyelid where the canthi are as much as possible. So the medial canthus is going to be there. It's hard to see from this side. So we wind up with something like that. think <clears throat> it's gonna bring that out and let me just make some clear lines okay so that's pretty good so now if we just turn off my side here my front measurements this is my side sketch I'm working in now I can maybe work up some of these details here, or at least strengthen the lines is really what I mean. Now there's one more step to do, which is to do the finished sketches, which is where we go in and really trace this, but clean it up a little bit. so. I don't have such thick, messy lines. This is not too bad, um, but I, I just want to have made all my decisions properly and without ambiguity in the line work. So when I go into Maya to model something, I'm not guessing where the corner of the uh, alar crease is. It's clearly defined. Like if I have something sketchy like this, I'm kind of fudging it a little bit. So after this, I'll go in and just clean things up, export the drawings, and take them back into Maya. For doing the neck, I would look at some references. It's hard to judge where this comes from. <coughs> Oops. Excuse me. So we'll come back in the next, vi next video finish things up and export. Thanks.